Hello, today we're going to continue working on decimal notation. First, you all did a fantastic job yesterday. I'm extremely proud of all of you. You all worked extremely hard throughout the entire morning and the entire day. You should be very proud of yourselves. Today, we're gonna to continue adjusting to this online learning experience. And I do wanna go over a few mistakes that many of you made so you can improve on the work that you do today. So the first thing is many of you got this question wrong. You said nine and 15 thousands. And many of you put this answer in nine and 15 hundredths. I want you to recognize that it says nine and 15 thousands, which this means that after my decimal point, you're going to have one, two, three digits. And I see the nine. So the first thing many of you did do this, you put nine and then a decimal point. That's great. But now, and stands for my decimal point, 15 thousands. So I'm going to fill in and write 15 and I know it has to fill those three spaces, but I don't have a digit in my tenths place. And it's still very important that you still include a digit there. So we're going to include my zero. Now notice I drew these lines representing my ones place, my decimal point, my tenths, my hundredths, my thousandths. It is very important that you do this on scrap paper as you're answering these problems because it will really help you stay organized and help you put each digit in the proper place. So many of you did write this answer, but notice that's only when two digits and that's hundredths, but it's asking for thousands. So the correct answer should look just like this. And this this is something today I really want all of us to work on. Now the next problem, 20 and 104 thousandths. So the first thing I hear is thousandths, and that's telling me after the decimal point again, I'm going to have three digits. And notice I'm drawing these lines, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. You need to do that for every problem. Now before my decimal point is 20. And since it's 20, that's telling me I have a digit in my ones place and my tens place. But now we have 104,000. So 104 thousandths. So I'm simply writing 104 thousandths right after the decimal point. But be careful when you're reading these problems and make sure you're not thinking it's 140, which is where many of you got 14 hundredths from. So be very, very careful. I saw many interesting numbers that were inputted to this problem. So be very mindful and of how you are entering these numbers in. And sometimes you need to write them out and then read it again. Did what I write says, does it represent 20 and 104 thousandths? Or maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I need to move a digit around. Now the next problem, we have 907 thousandths. Now the first thing I want you to see is read this one more time. 907 thousandths. Do you even hear an and? Okay, no. So that means you have no whole number here. So we're going to start it with zero and then my decimal point because there was an and. So this thousands with this THS at the end is representing I have a piece of my whole. And that means all my digits are going to be to the right of my decimal point. But thousands is telling me that I'm going to have three digits to the right of my decimal point. And I have 907 thousandths. So simply 907 thousandths. That's all you're doing. Many of you wrote 907, but you did not include your decimal point. This answer here was what most of you put. You cannot forget your decimal point. Hearing thousandths, that THS is telling you I have a piece of my whole, and you need to represent that using a decimal point. Now today what we're going to work on is again seeing numbers in expanded form and we're going to continue working on writing them in decimal notation. Based off of yesterday's work, I think we could use one more date with some practice on this to make sure you all fully understand this. Now again, just like the previous problems, I'm going to draw my lines to represent each digit in each place. So here I have my hundreds, my tens, my ones. Here's my decimal point because I see I have tenths and I have hundreds. So I'm including 
I'm including a line to represent that as well. So in my hundreds here, I have two hundreds. So the digit in my hundreds place would be a two. I have 60 telling me that my digit in my tens place would be a six. And I have one representing the digit in my ones place would be a one. Now I'm given the value three tenths. So that's telling me the digit in my tenths place would be a three. The value four hundredths is telling me the digit in my hundredths place would be a four. And this is giving me the number in standard form, which is 261 and 34 hundredths. Notice I drew these lines to help me identify the number before I type it in anywhere. My next one, here I see I have 90 and I have five, so that's telling me I have a digit in my tens place, my ones place. Now for this problem, I see I have tenths, hundredths, thousands. So the value 90 is telling me the digit in my tens place is going to be a nine. And the digit here in my ones place is going to be a five. Now one tenth is telling me the digit in my tens place is going to be a one. Two hundredths is telling me the digit in my hundredths place is going to be a two. And nine thousandths is telling me the digit in my thousandths place is going to be a nine, giving me the number 95 and 129 thousandths. Notice when I add all of this together, it's going to bring me back to this number in standard form. Now our last problem we're going to do is seeing a number in word form. So here we have 82 and 7 thousandths. So when I see that and or I hear somebody saying and, that's telling me I will have a decimal point. And before my decimal point I have 82, which means I have a digit in my ones and my tens place. And then all I hear is 7 thousandths. But because I hear seven thousandths, that's telling me I'm going to have three digits after my decimal point. But notice I just have seven thousandths. So all I have is a digit seven in my thousandths place, which means in my tenths and my hundredths place, I'm going to write a zero because you still need to represent that digit. So this is giving me the number 82 and seven thousandths. So looking at these answer choices, A, B, C, or D, what I exactly wrote here is the same as answer choice B. Now today you're going to practice problems just like this. If you need to refer back to this video at any time, it is posted on my YouTube channel and it will be posted there throughout this entire online learning experience in case you ever want to refer back to it during any assignment that we have in the next few weeks. So as always, if you have any questions or concerns, any questions or concerns, please contact me through Google Classroom and I will answer back to you as soon as possible.